Hello YouTube world, it's Swoozy, and I have another On My Mind video for you today that I have been thinking about quite a bit since the death of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. And it was also prompted by a discussion that I had with Sybil in the comments. And um, in the wake of Kate Spade's death, one of the things that came out in a lot of the news stories, and one in particular that I was watching at one point, had made the comment that the statistics show that the highest rate of suicide is for middle age, middle aged men and women. Um, they had actually reported that women were on the increase. I am on a website by the AFSP, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and they state here, the rate of suicide is highest in middle age, and in particular between the ages of 45 and 54 years of age. And I was really taken aback by that because I guess stupidly, um, and probably from my experience, I just always thought the highest rate of suicide was amongst um, teenagers and young adults. Uh, because most of the suicides that I've known have been teens, and you know, they're so angsty, and everything is a disaster. You know, if you deal with teenagers in any way, shape, or form, you know how emotional they can be, and you know, they're in the crux of so much, um, just going on socially, and acceptance, and maturing, that I guess I just always assumed that they were the highest rate, but apparently that's not true. We are the highest rate of suicide. And I started thinking, with women in particular, because uh, I can't necessarily speak to men, but with women in particular, I was wondering, why is that? Why is it that when you hit that 45 to 54 middle-aged age bracket, why is suicide so high? And I think there's two reasons for that in my, you know, as, as I've kind of kicked this around. And I think one of them has to do with historically and socially how women and women's illnesses have been treated. Sybil was saying in one of her comments that she had done some research and had found that women who were going through menopause were treated as insane. And a lot of them were actually, um, oh gosh, I just went blank, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of them were institutionalized for going through menopause because they were crazy or, you know, they were not right. They were unstable. They were too emotional. And, you know, that was the other thing. That's, uh, and I did a little bit of research, too. And, you know, that was one of the things that I kind of found is that when women were too emotional. Um, they were often viewed as there was something wrong with them, especially when you look, look during the Victorian period and the turn of the 20th century. A lot of times, women who were going through any kind of um, emotional imbalance, emotional trauma, um, emotional distress, like menopause, like postpartum depression, they were treated as crazy, they were unstable, they were nuts, and they needed to be treated. And what's interesting is um, I'm familiar with a short story by Dorothy Parker Gilman entitled The Yellow Wallpaper. And the story is all about this woman and it's around the tw turn of the century and she's a writer and um, her husband is a physician, and this is based on actual events that happened to her. And um, she had had a baby, and this, you know, specifically is dealing with postpartum, but I think it relates to the menopause. I think there's a connection. 
And she was dealing with postpartum, but at the time nobody knew what it was. And her husband, as a physician, decided she needed a rest. So he takes her, he rents this house out in the country. She's told she's put in this room where there's a lot of sunlight um, up on the top floor and he sleeps in another room and she's just, just supposed to sit and rest. She's not supposed to work. She's not supposed to talk to people. She's just supposed to sit in this room and do nothing to recuperate. And it was interesting because as the story evolves, um, you know, she keeps saying, I need to visit with people. I, I need to be writing, but she's not allowed to because, you know, he was the male and he knew better. So, spoiler alert, she goes insane by the end of the story from the isolation because she was basically put in solitary confinement. Uh, the writer did not get that far because the writer was a strong enough person when she was... Um, I think she was institutionalized for a while and she was like, this is bull. Um, this is making me worse instead of making me better. And she was actually able to escape that situation. But I thought about that a lot in the wake of this and when thinking about this um, high rate of suicide in our age bracket. And I think part of the reason for that is that our ailments have often been brushed off you know we've especially menopause has been treated as crazy and I think you know what pops into my head and I know that so many of you probably remember this um, what pops into my head immediately is the episode of all in the family when Edith is going through menopause and you know, she's portrayed as going through these severe mood swings where one minute she's happy and the next minute she's just screaming, Archie! And just, you know, angry. And, um, you know, she's supposed to just get over it. And Archie actually says that to her, you know, just, you know, get it, get over it, get it done with. And um, that, that was the vision, that was the view um, obviously, All in the Family was trying to deal with it because All in the Family, you know, was groundbreaking and was dealing with issues that um, we were in a changing society at the time. But I thought, you know, that's how it was always portrayed. It's it's a little bit of crazy. Um, she's unstable. Oh, you know, people roll their eyes and, oh, you know, she's going through the change. And it was never taken seriously. And another thing that pops into my head was an episode of the Golden Girls. I know I'm referencing some of the most obscure things, but I re distinctly remember this episode of the Golden Girls where Dorothy was not feeling right, things were wrong, and when she went to the doctor and she said, there's something wrong with me, and it ended up being chronic fatigue syndrome, and she was like, there's something wrong with me. The doctor said to her, well, you know what, you just need to go get, go get a new haircut, get your hair colored and go shopping and you'll feel better. And that's literally the way women were treated. They were, you know, if you had a problem, well, just, you know, buy her something pretty and she'll be fine again. And that wasn't the problem and that wasn't the solution. So I think that plays a part is this view of, you know, postpartum depression and menopause. I think, you know, the way society has viewed and treated us during those times of our lives, where it's something to, you know, even, let's even talk about our periods, men, you know, menstruation. You know, oh, you know, it's that time of the month and, you know, expect her to be crazy, you know, that whole thing. And that's still existent today. Um, I've seen it on episodes of the Big Bang Theory, you know, so our culture is still promoting that concept and idea that there are times of life where we just go kind of crazy. And there was a point where we were treated like that and locked up for behaving in that manner because we were crazy. So I think that's one of the contributors the other thing that I started thinking about, and this is um, 
just as I kind of was kicking this around, you know, why would somebody like Kate Spade, who, you know, has it all, she's got wealth, she's got fame, um, you know, she was in a, a supposedly happy marriage. I know that there have been some rumors in the wake that maybe there was an impending divorce or they had some issues, but I think they were working through them. She had a beautiful child. Why would you do that? And here's the other thing I started thinking about. And um, it's the idea that in that 45 to 54 year bracket, think about what's happening in a lot, not all, because like for instance, my friends all got married a little bit later, so it's gonna happen for them a little later. But in that bracket, for a lot of women that maybe followed a more traditional and got married in their 20s and had kids, and you know, by the time they were 30, they had a couple kids. When you hit this 45 to 54 age bracket, your entire world is changing. Everything is changing. Your body is no longer your body. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I have thought, I don't even understand my body anymore. I just don't understand it. It's not responding the way it used to. It's not doing what it's always done. I just don't understand my body anymore. Because, you know, menopause physically, biologically changes us. And it's sometimes hard to deal with those changes because we may not be as svelte, svelte and sexy as we used to be, because at this age, you're not supposed to be sexy anymore. You're just supposed to be, okay? I see a lot of women in this age bracket who don't seem to care about their appearance anymore. They, quote, let themselves go, um, because you're at that age where nobody cares anymore. And your body's telling you nobody cares anymore, because that's what menopause is. Menopause is your body saying you are done with fertility. And fertility is desirability. And once you're not fertile, you're not desirable. And that's hard for women in this society to deal with because society and culture has fed us that our entire being is about being desirable. And all of a sudden now our body is telling us, no, you're not, give it up, let it go. And so we're just supposed to turn into old hags. Men aren't hags, we're hags. And we're just supposed to do that. So your body is going through all these changes. So you're dealing with that. You're dealing with the confusion, the uncertainty of physical changes of menopause and then, if you think about it, let's add into that equation the changes that are happening in your home. Um, your children are starting to hit the age where they literally don't need you anymore. And for, I think, a lot of women, this age bracket is where their kids are hitting those teenager and a lot of people in this age bracket, I have a friend who's dealing, I mean, my friends are dealing with this right now or starting to deal with this. They're graduating high school, which means, God willing, they're leaving. And God willing, they're leaving forever. They're not supposed to come back. And some women are facing you know, this empty nest, their lives have been built around running kids to practices. Mom, I forgot my cleats for practice. Can you run them up here to school? Mom, I need this. I need, I need, I need help, help, help. And your entire life, your entire adult life, if you have children, has been geared towards the children. And it's been geared towards taking care of them and feeding them and housing them and clothing them and helping them and assisting them. And now they theoretically don't need you anymore. And they leave. And once they leave for college, 
they are supposed to be taking their first steps to starting their own adult lives. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen if you did your job correctly. You know, they go to college, they get a job, and they are on their own now, starting their own families. But now they don't need you anymore. And now you're left, for some women, I think, they're left with this void. Like, what do I do now? And if your marriage isn't strong, once those kids leave, that adds even more difficulty into dealing with all of this. You know, I do know people that once the kids are gone, they start traveling, they start doing things, and then there are people who don't know what to do. And I started wondering, is that part of why that age bracket has such a high rate of suicide? Because there's so many changes happening in your life that for some people it's hard to deal with that. You know, and even I think about, you know, my mom who's a senior citizen, now that my nieces and nephew are older, um, you know, one of them is driving now and they're more independent. And my mom has even said, and I, this happens with grandparents, um, and I've heard this from more than one senior citizen, who has been really involved in their grandchildren's lives and maybe babysat them and was always being called to run them around or hey they need to be picked up from school or hey can you come and sit with them until we get home my mom says they don't need me anymore and i wonder if that's what happens to maybe women in particular in that middle age bracket they don't need me anymore and if your identity which makes sense that it would, that your identity has been built around being needed as a mother and now that's taken away from you and you add menopause into that, I can understand why women in that age bracket would have difficulty and why suicide would potentially be prevalent because maybe there's a sense of hopelessness and helplessness and loss that some women can't overcome. And you know, you, you throw into it, you know, the way culture and society has always treated us and our emotions as being something to scoff and laugh at and roll your eyes at and make a joke out of. I can understand that. So, you know, that's some of my thoughts then totally spurred by you know the suicide of Kate Spade because it was shocking why would she do that I don't know maybe you know all of that there's I think so many pieces to the puzzle um, that's what's on my mind and I'd love to hear your thoughts thanks for watching and as always ladies if you are having some difficulty and you're feeling lost and you're looking at suicide as an option i'm going to leave some contact information make a phone call first thanks for watching and as always ladies subscribe because we deserve to reclaim our sexy because age wisdom and confidence are damn sexy Bye.